So today I'm going to be going over tests and quizzes in Notebull. In the session, we will create a quiz as part of the demo. Uh, students who work for ETS will take that quiz and then we'll take a look at how you see the responses. I will also cover how you can do accommodation and um, one of the ways we're recommending to set up quiz or test accommodations for students that require it. I am in a Notebull course and this is just our ETS demo course that I use for all of these sessions and I did clean it up a bit before I pulled it up. So to make a test or a quiz, you will go to the assignments tab. And in that assignments tab, this is where you add all tests, quizzes, assignments, discussion boards, everything like that where students are submitting something in Notebook. First, you will click the add button and then test slash quiz. You'll give it a, a title. So I'm going to call this animal quiz. All of my demos usually have animals or pets involved. I'm going to choose a category. Now, Nopal does have some stock categories that it will automatically populate for all courses, but you can go ahead and change these. That's actually part of the grades tab, and we do have a video available in the YouTube channel that goes over the grades tab. We also had a session a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll offer another one over the summer, but we do have a video available on the YouTube channel. This visible to option, this means who you are setting to be able to view the test or quiz. And I will come back to this in my talk about setting up accommodation for tests and quizzes. Grade display type, that's how students will see their grade. You can choose between the options in the drop down here. I'm just going to do points because that's the simplest way. Also in that grades tab video that we have on the YouTube channel, I do go over all the different grade display types and what all of them mean. Here you can set a time limit if you wish. If you only want to give students 10 minutes to take your quiz, you can do that and it will give them a countdown while they are taking the quiz so they see exactly how long they have left. You can put a description in there. Please take this quiz. Or if you have more uh, direction that you need to give them for whatever reason, that's what the description box is there for. Choosing question order. So that means will the questions will the sorry. That means will the questions that appear on the student's screen be in the order that you put them in the quiz or do you want them to randomize so that each student potentially sees a different question order. The reason to choose random for that would be so that they're scrambled and students who might all be taking it at the same time won't all be seeing the same questions in the same order. The same option is available for answer order. You can also choose that to be random and it will scramble the order of the answers so that it's not always the same for every student. Answer visibility, this is when students will be able to see the correct answers on the test or quiz. And this specifically applies to multiple choice, multiple select, true, false, all of those types of questions that can be corrected by Notebook because you're choosing A is the right answer. So if you had a fully multiple choice test or quiz, you could make it to where the students see answers after submission and then they would see all of the answers, um, all the correct answers immediately after they submit. You have the ability here to decide when you want them to see those answers. So I'm just going to choose after specified date and then I can pick, maybe I will have it available to them on the 9th. And you can always edit this later if you need. Another submission option here is show one question per page. This is another one of those that might potentially help with preventing some cheating if you're worried about that. So random question order, random answers, one question per page, a timed quiz. 
that gives students less time to phone a friend and try to have a conversation about which question they're on and figuring out the answers. So if that's something you're worried about, you have the option to choose just one question per page. Restrictions here, this would require them to have an access code to access the quiz. So I'm going to put an access code in there. So during the demo, one of our students or all of our students will have to put the access code in if they want to view the quiz. So this, a use case for this would be maybe you, um, you want them all to take it at the same time or, and you're hosting the class, um, trying to think of a more specific example. So I know last year, someone did not want students trying to take a test or a quiz from their dorm room. He wanted them to physically be in class before they could take it. So he would put the access code on the board and then they could take it during class. Um, this semester, it's a little bit different, obviously, but maybe you want to proctor them all in one big Zoom session you could tell them you'll give them the access code when they arrive to the Zoom session, and then that's when they'll be able to actually get into the test or quiz if you wanted to go that route. Questions here. This is just to generate your first question. You'll be able to put more information in about each individual question, including adding more questions, deleting questions, and then also changing points per question. But this is just to get it started. Uh, and it's really useful if you say are just doing 50 multiple choice questions, because then here you do 50, five points each, and it's just going to generate all of that for you. I'm just going to start with one, and I can make that five points, and I'm going to hit create. Now, no, when you hit the create button, it is not going to send that right out to your students right away. You still have things to set up on this quiz before your students will be able to see it. And also, as just a precaution, they're not even going to see it even after you add your questions until you hit this publish test or quiz button that my mouse is circling over here. So students aren't going to see anything until you're absolutely ready to send that quiz to them. I'm going to come back to this information at the top after I set up my questions, because like I said, students aren't seeing anything yet. So you can go ahead and take your time, set up your questions, and then decide on all these dates. So down here is my question one, and it is multiple choice for five points, because that's what I said when I first created the quiz, how I wanted it to be set up. So now I'm going to start adding my quiz questions here. And you'll notice here that the option for anchor answer has come up. And the reason for that would be in case you want to do a none of the above or all of the above, you can choose to anchor it and it will anchor it to the bottom so that it makes the most sense. The obvious correct answer for this is dog. So I'm selecting dog. I see Catherine over there shaking her head at me. But the obvious correct answer for this one is dog. So I will choose that as the correct answer here. Something else you can do in tests and quizzes is you can also make attachments. So if you wanted to do anything with photos, like identify the correct um, type of cell, you could go ahead and attach those as options. So if I wanted to attach a photo of a dog, I would click there. I so happen to have a photo of this very adorable dog. I will hit open and it would be right there. I do not have a picture of a cat or a fish on hand, so I'm not going to be able to attach those, but I will show you what that looks like when we get there. Okay, so that's my first question and that's the multiple choice example. All right. So in here, I've only set up my multiple choice questions so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and click add question to add the next type of question. It defaults to multiple choice since that's what I chose, but I can go ahead and choose from that drop down menu a different type of question. 
So the next one I'm going to show you is multiple select. I'm leaving it at five points, but I could change that if I wanted. And then I'm going to say, what are the best names to give a pet, right? Notice how I am not picking <laughs> very uh, specific answers that have exact, or very specific questions that have exact answers, but let's go with Rover. Okay, so now I've filled in those answer choices. Again, you can also do an attachment if you want. I could even say none. And I can pick more than one as the correct answer. And the way that it's going to grade um, multiple select is a little different. It's trying to use a fancy algorithm that's determining out of how many answers, if they get it correct, how it's going to break down the points. Um, and I'm going to show you what that looks like when we look at answers in a little bit. But you can also change how you're allocating the points for those questions if you don't like how Noble mathematically divides it up. And then again, I'll show you that soon. Going to add another question here. And we're going to do a true-false. Okay, so I'm, cats are mean. I find that true. They don't like me. Or maybe it's not even that they're mean. Cats are very particular. All right, so we'll do that. We all know that's true, so I'm not being mean there. Let's add a question. We're going to choose the free response one. So free response, and it's going to note this up here, free response questions must be manually graded. That's because the computer is not going to be able to determine if that's correct or not. Um, I'm going to put a question here. And then it does give the option for correct answer. The reason for that is because sometimes you do have a specific correct answer. So when you go to grade the quiz later, you would then see the correct answer right here and you wouldn't have to go look in notes or think about it beyond just being able to see it. So here I'm going to put, um, I'm just going to put varies because I'm asking them to tell me a story. But obviously if there was a correct answer, you could add that. And again, I can change my points. I'll give that 10 points. And the last question type that I'm going to show you is a file upload. So a file upload lets them attach something that they can upload. So I'm going to say here, please attach a funny photo of an animal you found on, oops, on the internet, right? Okay. And then I could also attach, I showed you how you can attach a file as part of the um, answers, but you can also attach files as part of the question. And you can even attach videos too. So I have a video of my kid there. Um, you could attach a video to be part of that or you can do a photo, whatever you'd like. Let's do a video. Um, sorry, it's like the only short video I have, so we'll just grab that one. Okay, so I have my questions all set up. I'm going to scroll back right up to the top there. And a few things to notice right off the bat is it's calculated the points for me based on how many points I gave each question. The status is unpublished, and if that status is unpublished, even if the available date is passed, students do not see it. It won't even give you the due on date because it's not published, and grades are not published because students haven't taken it because it hasn't even been published yet. So that information is at the top there, though. Down here, this is where I can go ahead and change when I want students to see it. So I choose, maybe I don't want them to see it until tomorrow. I could do that. And then once I do publish it, they still won't be able to see it today. They won't see it until tomorrow at 2.13 p.m. 
So I'm going to change it to today. And that's in the past, so it will just turn on for them. They'll already be able to see it. And then I have a due date here. You can put a very short or a very long window for your due date. It's completely up to you. But after the due date, they're not going to be able to take the test or quiz. OK, and let's say I'm ready. I've got all of my questions. I'm just going to hit that Publish button. And Notebook is going to double check with you. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to publish this? Because once you publish it, it will be visible to students on that available date. And you can only edit the questions when the assessment is unpublished. So what that means is as long as no student is answered yet, you could go back in and edit your questions. But you also see the warning message that it says, once there is a submission, you will not be able to edit the questions or the available date. And that's an important one to point out. We had a case where someone just had a typo or a word misspelling, but something like half of the class had already taken the quiz. So it was this huge thing where do you change the spelling of the word after half the class has taken the quiz because it does change the question if it's spelled differently. So no bold just has the statement up there. Once there is a single submission, you cannot go back in and edit the questions. So keep that in mind um, to double check the questions. And then you hit submit there or publish there, sorry. And now the test or quiz is published. So over here, we can see results by students. No one has done anything yet, so I'm not seeing anything. But we will see that in just a moment once I send the quiz over to our students to go ahead and take. OK. so. There is a really neat feature in Notebull where you can go to the More tab as a professor and you can view as the student. So you can see most of what the student sees using the View As option, but I want Anu to actually fully take this so you can see the entire thing from his perspective. And then we'll also take a look at the View As uh, on our end too. So he's entering the access code and clicking Start Assessment. Okay, so it's scrambling the order for him. And you can see that the video, that's the video I embedded right there. Uh, this was the last question when I created it, but since I have it going random for him, it's actually the first question for him. So I asked him to uh, find a funny picture of a pet and upload that because this is that file upload one. And it doesn't have to be a pet on it. You can just pick anything you want. Yeah, I couldn't find one. That's fine. And then he could, wait for a second, Anu, he could hit play there, and or he could open that, and he can hit play and watch the video. <laughs> so she's saying rock on, by the way. And when he's done, he can just hit the X out of there. So he could watch the video. It doesn't open in a new window. It does um, direct a little bit away from the question, but it doesn't pop out or go anywhere else. And then once he's done, he will hit next. And then for the second question, he's now on his question two. Um, you can see that the answer, so this is the one where I put the image as one of the answer options. So it says the text, and then right under that is the image of the dog. And if I did it for cat and fish, it would be the same way. And then he can go ahead and hit next. And now this is the multiple select. Um, Anu, can you get this wrong for me, please? Thank you. And this is the one where he has to tell me a story. And the students just love when I put them on the spot and make them type up stories during live demos with faculty. It is their favorite. <laughs> you can just put a few words, Anu. That's fine. That's perfect. You can hit next. And um, we did just have a question come in from Catherine, and we'll address this in one second. So cats are very particular. Now, wait, don't hit submit yet. Um, up at the top, you can see where it's Q1, Q2, 3, 4, 5, all of those. He could navigate back and go to a previous question if he wanted. So if he said, oh, wait, I didn't like how I did my story, I'll go back to that one later. He can do that. You can also see that he has a time remaining counter. 
you want to hover your mouse over where those are, he can see the time remaining at the top, and it's also over on the right side. Down a little bit, Anya. Yep, right there. So he can also see the time remaining there. So he knows how long he has to complete the quiz. And once he submits or once he gives an answer for each question, the little check mark appears next to each of the cues. Okay, so go ahead and hit submit for us. And it's going to double check with the students before, so he can hit submit again. Now it says here, notice under his results, results will be available after 8, 9, 2020, 207 p.m. That's because that was that date I chose when I first created the test or quiz. And I can change that and I'll show you how to do that as well. But this is what he sees when he is done because we did not let him get visibility to any of the answers yet. When you're ready to go and grade your quiz or test, you're going to navigate to that assignments tab again. And down here, you can see animal quiz. That's the one I created. The status is open. I see my available date and my due date. This is that category when we first set it up. The points. And I really like this number of submissions. That's this column over here. I can see that two out of four of my students have taken it. This is a very small class. So I can see that there. Now when I'm ready to go in and grade, I can just click on the name of the quiz over here. And I can see my questions. This is back to that original edit view that I had before. But I'm not going to do anything with questions. I'm going to take a look at the results. And I can either look at results by student or results by question. Okay. So I'm going to show you both of those views. This is the results by student. And I really like the results by student for double checking on grades or if you need to look at individual students and see what they were answering. Typically for if you are grading a test or a quiz where you are going in there and actually giving them marks and everything, you might want to use results by question. And that's going to allow you to look at one question at a time and go through them. So we're going to do it this way. Let's hit question one. So results by question, I have question one, and this one was the multiple choice that the computer or Nopal automatically graded. And I can see here Anu got a five out of five, and I see his name, and I can see the question. And if I keep scrolling, which I did very quickly, my next student is Noah, and he hasn't submitted yet. So it gives him this dash. The dash in Nopal means null, or nothing is being counted. He has not done it yet. If I scroll down, I see the dash there because Trent has not done it. And then down here I see Ron chose the correct answer, which is dog. And he got a five out of five there. Okay, now this is where I said if you wanted to modify it, you really could, but typically multiple choice, there's an answer. You can also add feedback here. So they'll see per question feedback when you click that. So you can do it there. So after the first question, I can use these arrows up here to navigate to the second question, question two. And it tells me here, and this is where I said it's trying to mathematically decide how the points are being allocated based on the number of possible responses and the number that they did respond. So I can see for Anu here, there were three of the multiple select that were right, and it gave him zero because he only chose one of the correct and then one of the incorrect. If you decide that really should be one point, you can give them one point for that. You can modify the response there from Notebook. Right, so then I can give him comments if I want. Something you can do too is you could have some stock comments or something that you copy and paste in there for some of these. Um, they will see the correct answers once they're released to them, so you don't have to go and tell them the correct answers but once they're released, um, they'll have access. So down here, Ron only chose CAD. He didn't choose any right ones, so he's definitely getting a zero there. Okay, 
Now I can go to the third question. I think this was the true and false, so that's pretty straightforward. And if I scroll down, Ron also said true. And would you cat lovers agree? Cats are very particular, right? I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the next one, I'll skip to the next question. Four, I can see here a few things. Now this is that, uh, this is the option for the, what is it called? Why am I blinking? Oh, this is the option for the free response. And here you have to grade it. It has to manually be graded. So it's telling me this answer has not been graded. It's calling my attention to that. And here I wrote correct answer varies because there's not really a correct answer, but he has written, there was once a bird. Okay, I mean, there probably was once a bird. I'll give you seven on me because I rushed you and you were on the screen. That's hard. And then down here, let's see, Ron. Once upon a time, there was a dog who had a bone. He lost the bone, the end. Okay, I'll give you nine and a half. That's pretty complete. So there we go. So that's how you can grade those. You can also do feedback again. You can do feedback for any type of question using those little feedback bubbles. The last question type we did was I asked them to please attach a funny photo of an animal you found on the internet. And depend, that actually reads as an animal you found on the internet. So my animal I found on the internet is my two-year-old. Um, I did not find her on the internet. But they could attach um, a funny photo and you can give them, you can zoom in to see their answer by clicking that. They could also attach audio files, video files, they could attach PDFs, anything that can be attached and uploaded, they can put in there. So make sure you're specific if you have a specific file type you want them to put in. Uh, and you could even have them like download a file, modify it and upload it again in the same question. So that is an option and you can give credit the same way as we did all of them. And it will always show you your question. <laughs> and let's take a look at Ron's animal. That is a funny animal. You are right. There we go, five. Okay, so I've graded all of those and I'm scrolling back to the top. I did that rather quickly. But the other way I could view the answers is results by student. And down here, it's going to show me that general information, when they started, when they submitted, the status and their grade, because I've already gone through and graded them. You might have a case where a student is appealing to you because they said, I started the quiz and then I lost my internet connection, I need to reopen it. And you could reopen a submission so the student can retake it by clicking this arrow over here. Now, Trent and Noah haven't taken it yet. So you'll notice they have a dash for their grade because the due date has not passed yet. So it's not letting me just give them zeros yet. If I change my due date, let's make it today, oops, at, Let's make it today at 2.31. Oh, I made it AM, sorry. Save that. Now it has passed, the time has passed for the due date. And you will see here that since the due date has passed and they never submitted their test or quiz, it tells me here for the status that the system has already graded three out of five right, because those were the ones that the computer could grade and it marked them all as wrong. So you can see their results by question two now when you go through the questions and you can see he has no submission and I was wrong, you do need to give them a zero for those. Um, so there is a little manual grading there. You should be able to give them a zero. Oh, you give them a zero for the whole quiz, sorry. We'll cut that part out. Uh, if I go by the results by student, I can go over here and give them a zero since they did not submit. 
And now those are officially graded with zeros and I can go ahead and publish my grades if I would like. So you'll see here under the test and quiz published information is this red exclamation point that says grades are not published. Grades being published are different than the test or quiz being published. Grades mean that students will see their grades, right? They'll see what you gave them. It used to be the default that grades were automatically published. Nopal has changed that. Grades are automatically not published. And many of the people I spoke with um, like it that way better because now you can decide when you're ready to actually push out the grades so all the students can see their published grades. So I'm going to click Publish Grades and it's going to confirm that with me. And I can choose Publish here. And now you can see grades are published. The students can see these grades. And I told you I would show you earlier and I forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that more option and click view as. And I can pick a particular student and you'll notice here, he's still not able to see the results. Remember, because I said that they wouldn't be available until the ninth. So it's going to tell him his grade because the grade is published, but he's not going to be able to see individual answers. And there is a reason you might want to do this. It, it could be because you've published the grades automatically and you don't care if the students see the grades right away, but perhaps all the students haven't submitted yet because the due date has not passed. So if the due date has not passed, they obviously can still get in there and submit. Uh, so I can always change that. Let's go ahead. We can hit that pencil of edit details. And I can make answer availability changed to after the due date. I'll hit save again. And now when I do the more, the view as, and I pick a particular student, he can see his answers versus the correct answers. He can also see my feedback. And he can see all of that right in here. Okay. So let me X out of here. And that is the general setup of a test or a quiz in Nopal. Do you, do you have any questions on that general setup? Because I do want to touch on how you can set up the accommodation options in Nopal. Yes. 